I'm not that type of guy who walks on stage with like a six mile long pedal board, right? And like the Strymon reverb and like, you know what I'm talking about, the shoes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, man. Neural Amp Modeler is blowing my mind. As a software plugin, it has a very small processor footprint on my DAW. As for sounds, there are some killer tones out there that you can get all for free. I sought to answer the question, can you build a complete, fully functional, Sunday-ready laptop-based rig for free? Let's find out. There are a couple of parameters we need to establish in order to make this 100% free. The less you spend on a system, the more constraints and limitations the system is going to have. So let's define what 100% free means. I'm defining it in this system to mean that all the software processing is going to be free. I'm also assuming that there already have been sunk costs that you've spent to enable a laptop rig, namely an audio interface which may have come with a digital audio workstation and some way to send the audio out to the front of house. But on that note on external gear, I'm not going to include external controllers. All control is going to be done in the box. I want a completely compact solution where the only gear you need for this rig are input-output interfaces, the laptop, the guitar cable, and the guitar. That's the goal. For the digital audio workstation or DAW, we're going with Ableton Live Lite. As of 2023, if you don't have a Live Lite license, you need to buy a hardware device which offers an included license key. This wasn't always the case though. I was fortunate enough to have downloaded Live Lite 8 when it was freely available, and since then, I've been able to renew my license to download the latest Live Lite 11. If you've downloaded Ableton Live Lite before without a hardware purchase, you're in luck and you can upgrade to Live Lite 11 for free. If not, well, you might as well consider purchasing something that you'll need for production anyway, like a new audio interface or a MIDI controller. Ableton's automation abilities are insanely simple to set up, and I prefer using MIDI nodes to trigger changes as I progress from start to finish of the set list. What this means is that I'm going to be setting the arrangement of the song in stone so that I can queue up MIDI note triggers along the timeline of the song to toggle effects on or off, and more importantly, switch between different instances of Neural M Modular loaded up with different profiles. For this to work, you need Ableton Live to be sending MIDI notes to a virtual MIDI bus that communicates to and fro Ableton. On Mac, you should be configuring the IAC driver. On Windows, there's an additional step. You'll need to download and install an additional software called Loop B1. To keep this video short, I've linked associated setup videos for the IAC driver and Loop B1 in the description box below that you can reference to set this up in your own time. It seems like a huge chunk of this video is setting up the virtual MIDI bus, huh? The hard part is over. Remember, the point of it all is to be able to send MIDI notes that will trigger changes in Ableton Live. Now on to the more exciting stuff. Remember, Neural M Modeler is just an M Profiler plugin. There are no other effects, but don't fret, because you can find exceptionally good sounding plugins for absolutely free. Here's my recommendation for dry and wet effects. The Curial has several sweet offerings for effects, and I particularly like their Greed Smasher, TS-808 Overdrive Pedal, and Chorus Pedal plugins. Valhalla DSP has amazing delay and reverb plugins that have presets that are Sunday ready, especially their Freak Echo and the Super Massive. A quick note about Apple security measures, if you encounter installation issues, there is a way to bypass them to allow the plugin to run. I'll link the webpage I used as a reference while I was troubleshooting this issue, particularly with Mercurial plugins. Before we carry on to setting up effects chains and MIDI note triggers, if you're finding value with this video, do hit that like button. It lets me know that what I'm doing is relevant for you and YouTube sends it out to more people. Also, if you're a fellow worship musician on the same journey of discipleship, consider subscribing. Now, I think that the easiest way to get a multiplicity of sounds and a variety of tones is not to have one neural amp model profile and then cram it with, you know, different overdrives, different delays and that sort of thing. Why don't you start stacking overdrives and gain pedals in front of a 
profile is going to get very grainy and hairy very quickly. In fact, you might end up sounding like this. That was my first time using new M model and I admit I didn't tweak the tone as best as I could. I've learned my lesson, don't stack too many game pedals in front of a new M model, just use different profiles and switch between them. Welcome to live mode where I'm going to take you through setting up channel switching automation from scratch. Conceptually, we're going to approach channel switching the same way Eric Johnson would with his live rig, where he uses a couple of AV boxes to toggle between his Fender and Marshall amps for rhythm and lead sounds. In today's example, I want two channels, a rhythm dotted 8 delay sound, which is quintessential PNW, and a lead sound, which is a less prominent quarter note delay. First, the track setup. We're going to load up two tracks on Ableton Live, each one with an instance of Neural Amp Modular. So let's create two audio tracks, make sure that they are looking at the exact same input. I'm going to rename this Load Up Neural Amp Modular on each instance. For rhythm, I want something a bit cleaner, so I'm going to go with the BC30. Now, this is a critical step. Make sure that input monitoring is set to on, and you'll know it's on because Ableton will change the color of the track to blue. This way, you hear audio processing through Ableton from input to output. The cool thing about Ableton is that even if you click on another track to bring that into focus, the input monitoring on the previous track is still enabled. This is not the case with other DAWs. So remember to turn input track monitoring on. So let's do the same for the lead track. I'm going to load up a model from Tone Junkie and I'm going to... Let's look at the send and return buses. With the light version, you get two send and return buses. I'm going to use one send and return bus as a master ambience which I can blend in rather than having to make changes to the ambience on the individual tracks. For this example, I'm just going to load up one instance of Supermassive as a master reverb. So go to Valhalla, Supermassive, drag to Ascend. I'm going to choose a pretty basic but very critical sound, which is a small and white. I really like this sound. Let's make sure that both the rhythm and the lead tracks get this. <laughs> How about the lead track? The other send return bus is going to be my quarter note delay blend, which I will use for the lead sound as it's routed in post. The second advantage is that I can blend in the quarter note delay into the dotted eighth tone for some truly epic ambience if I so want it. So let's go to the B send. I'm going to load up the freak echo. Going to click this delay sync to quarter note. I'm going to turn up the feedback to 55%. And now you should be able to hear a quarter note delay of the lead sound. Now, I want this channel to be a definite lead sound. And right now it's on crunch and I want a bit more boost into it. I'm going to load up the Mercurial Greed Smasher overdrive in front of Neural M Modeler. It's going to turn the level down, turn the gain up a bit, turn the tone up, and I get this sound. Now for the effects setup. For the rhythm track, I'm going to load up a dollar eight delay in front of this NAMP profile because I want the delays to crunch up when they hit the amp. And as a result, the repeats are going to be prominent, which is ideal for this track. So let's load up an instance of the Freak Echo in front of the rhythm track. Let's turn this to dotted eight, which is your quintessential delay. And let's turn the mix down to 44, turn the feedback down, let's say 40% too. So what sound is this going to be? Now that's a 
bit much because if you have a delay running into the AMP profile, you are going to get the delay to be processed by the AMP. So that's going to be compressed. That's going to be driven a little bit. So let's turn this down slightly. Let's go turn this to 40%. As you can hear, the delay is getting crunched up just that tiny little bit, which is very, very ideal for the modern kind of praise and worship kind of sound. On the lead track, I'm going to turn up the send to the quarter note delay bus. You can experiment with the mixed levels of delay and reverb on the buses to find your personal sweet spot. So let's turn this up. I'm going to turn off the rhythm, turn on the lead sound. So now let's A, B the two sounds we've just created, the rhythm sound and the lead sound. So rhythm. And now the lead sound. Third, let's get some automation going. I hope you follow the steps to get the virtual MIDI bus up and running. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck. Create a MIDI track where we'll name it as the control track. So let's go into arrangement view, insert MIDI track. I'm going to call this control. This track is going to contain the MIDI notes that will trigger automation. Once created, ensure that the MIDI output is set to the virtual MIDI bus. On my Mac, that's the IAC driver. On Windows, that's going to be loop BE1. Just a reminder. Now, create a MIDI clip before a point in time where you want to switch from a rhythm to a lead sound. Typically, this is going to be before a section change, like verse to chorus. So let's say that this position on bar, I'm going to zoom in here. Let's say on bar 5 is going to be chorus, downbeat of the chorus. So highlight a section like maybe a quarter of the bar or something. Anything will do, really. Right click and insert MIDI clip right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make it easier to see. This MIDI clip is going to be empty and it won't have any information in it. So double click on the piano roll in the clip to add a note. Let's say C4. Now when the timeline passes this clip, C4 is going to be triggered. Notice that on the right hand side on the window right here, you can see that the clip is triggering. With the IAC driver, Ableton's controls are now ready to receive C4 as a trigger. Now find the MIDI button on the top right hand corner, which is going to enable MIDI Learn. Click on a portion of the timeline before the MIDI clip, so let's say you know, one bar before. Now click on the speaker switch of the rhythm track, which is that big number, number three here, and press spacebar to play the timeline. Now, once the timeline passes the clip, C4 should be assigned to the speaker switch. And as a result, you can see that the assignment will show up on the left-hand side, which is the MIDI events or MIDI mappings. You should now see that C4 toggles the speaker switch on or off. Let's test it. Off. And then on. We're almost done. Repeat the same process for the lead track. Enable MIDI Learn. Click on the timeline one bar before or anywhere really. Click on the second speaker switch and now press play. Now you see that C4 triggers both the rhythm and the lead tracks, but that's a problem, isn't it? We want to toggle between the two, not switch both on or off. So right now, the same note will trigger them both on or off. Which I guess can be a cool sound, but that's not what we want. We want to toggle between A and B. Wait, there's more. The trick is to make sure that one switch is off while the other is on. This way, when the timeline passes the note trigger, one track turns on while the other turns off. So let's try this out. The rhythm track is on, the lead track is off. As the timeline 
line passes the MIDI note, it should be triggering the second lead channel. And now it's on lead, when I pass the note, it should go back to the rhythm sound. And there you have it. This is how to automate channel switching between two signal paths from Neural Amp Modular. But MIDI note triggers are not limited to switching channels. You can also use them to enable or disable individual plugins in a signal chain, and you can stack different notes in the same MIDI clip to turn multiple plugins on or off. It's all up to your imagination and creativity, and I hope this video has provided a springboard for your experimentation. A big bonus for those of you who've made it this far, I'm making this Ableton Live template free for download. It will be in my free pack on my Buy Me A Coffee page, so make sure you follow the steps to download all the effect plugins to get the template up and running properly. And what about you? How are you setting up Neuro M Modeler in your live rig? How do you feel about software solutions to guitar rigs? I'd love to hear your ideas, stories, and thoughts in the comment section below. If you'd like a deep dive into the philosophy about laptop-based setups and want to see more automation and pedalless guitar rigs, I have a playlist with all that content that you can watch next. I covered mostly using Neural DSP archetype Pachucci since that's the plugin I'm mostly familiar with. I'll see you there. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'm all about worship guitar.